All right, we good to go? <laughs> good morning. Welcome to One Church. How are y'all doing? Good, good. All right, well, uh, let's go ahead and stand up and we'll get started. Scripture prayer is something. We're going to pray it here in a bit if it, if it comes up. Uh, hmm. So, anybody know any good jokes or anything? Or? No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we got some technical difficulties. That's okay. There is a Bible line right here. Anybody know what it is? Hey. My bad. I'll help us out. There you go. So, in lieu of uh, trying to find this, if this is your first time uh, coming to One Church, 
things are a little bit different this morning, but one thing will be the same. Uh, either Paul Hudson, our pastor, um, or myself, sometime this week, we will contact you if you will fill out one of these little cards that says that uh, we're glad that you're here. Um, and we will pray for you by name and your family if you put their name on there as well. All right? Did we find it? Nope. Okay. Uh, we'll just go ahead and go to the next song, and we'll do the scripture play here after a while. What did he say? Jeremiah 29, 13. 13. We're looking it up right now. Here we go. Ready? (laughs) If you are a guest, I promise it doesn't go like this all the time. Paul is somewhere watching this and going, oh, no. Should have been there. All right, here we go. Oh, Man, all right, here we go. So you guys read the underlined portion of this. You ready? You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. After all that, it's really short. Short scripture for a verse. (laughs) That's all right. All right, let's pray together. Father God, we love you. God, we do pray that we would seek you with all our hearts, that we would seek you with all our hearts this morning, and not only this morning, but throughout the week, um, so that we can show people uh, who you are and uh, lead them to you father god we love you we praise you god we pray that this morning you would be overall glorified that uh as keenan speaks this morning god that you would speak through him and uh god that you would just be in this room this morning we love you we praise you in jesus name amen stature as nothing the king of all kings came to serve washing my feet covering me with your love if more of you means less of me take everything yes all of you is all Take everything. You are my life and my treasure, the one that I can't live without. Here at your feet, my desires and dreams I lay. your feet, my desires and dreams I live.
more of you. If more of you means less of me, take everything. Yes, all of you is all I need. Take everything.
bow your heads and pray with me, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we invite you into this place today for you to do what only you can do, to speak to our hearts directly as individuals and as a whole. Lord, that we would be in alignment with what you would have today, that we would give you our all, that we would remember how amazing, how beautiful, how merciful you have been and you will continue to be if we would simply be obedient. Lord, I lift up the Hudson family this morning to cover them, protect them today, send our love to their home. Lord, to everyone in earshot that is here in person and that is on Facebook that will see this now and later, that they would hear a word from you, that you would remove self, get me out of the way, and that we would hear directly from heaven this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Uh, Y'all can sit down. I am not Paul. (laughs) I'll say it again. I am not Paul. But I'm going to do my best. Um, Good morning. It's a privilege to be here this morning. Um, Paul's given me this honor to be able to preach to you today. And so, uh, oh, sorry, I almost missed it. Um, the Cox family has uh, Club 252 kids leaving now, so if you're in kindergarten through third grade, follow them out. They'll lead you across the street, and uh, I'll see you here in a little bit. Got it? All right, good deal. Um, we're going to be in Mark chapter uh, 5 in the first 20 verses there. It's not going to take that long, though. Um, so if you got your Bibles, you can scroll over to that. If you got your phone, make sure you ain't on the Facebook and we're actually on a Bible app, all right, and we'll get going. Um, we're going to talk about pursuing uh, the pursuit of Jesus today. Visualize it in your mind, what, what's something that you've pursued in life. Um, it could have been accolades academically, um, in a sport, a job. Um, you could be very simple like me and just want to be um, a great husband and a great father. Whatever it is, you put some time, some effort into it. Um, And we're just going to look at a a short passage of scripture this morning um, in someone that pursued Jesus. Um, And so when we look at that, we're going to be thinking every time that we pursue Jesus, that he gives us an opportunity for life change. This morning, we have another opportunity for life change. As we sit here together, as we've got people out for different various reasons, um, we have that opportunity right here and right now. Um, If we would position ourselves in submission to Jesus, he'll be allowed to work in our lives and give us purpose. And so if we uh, look at this passage of scripture, just uh, starting there at verse 2, and it goes, do we got those? Sorry. And I'll try not to talk fast. There's no way I talk faster than Paul, though. (laughs) And when Jesus stepped out of the boat, immediately there met him a man with an unclean spirit. Um, so in your little blanks, if you don't have one of these, if you'll raise your hand, somebody will probably bring you one. I forgot about that part too. It's cool. Paul makes this look easy, guys. In that first uh, blank that you have there, it should say when, why, and where. When, why, and where. Um, and that's what we're going to look into. Um, the second blank would have immediately is always the best time to pursue Jesus. That's the when. Um, if you've ever come across a time in your life that you were a little shaky in your faith, um, you didn't know where to turn next, the time to turn to Jesus is right now. Um, this man with this unclean spirit, we're going to go into some details about his life. Um, he's going to show us that he needs Jesus and he needs Jesus now. We look a little further down there. Um, he has plenty of reasons to need Jesus. There in verses 3 and 4 in this passage, it tells us that he doesn't have any control, that people have tried to bind him over time, uh, and they just can't keep him down. Um, if we look over to, to Luke chapter 8 and uh, verse 27, um, it even says that he has no clothes, that he's naked. He stays in tombs, um, running from tombs to mountains, back and forth. He has a lot of problems. That sounds like social issues, right? Um, if you've ever had any issues like social anxiety, Right? Standing up here, very uncomfortable. Okay? It's all right. You guys are comfy. Nobody has to look at you. All right? I see all your faces looking at me. All right? Um, He also had some psychological issues um, that he's running back and forth from these tombs, and he's not just running. He's screaming. He's crying out. He's cutting on himself. That's a problem. He was missing something. He was missing Jesus. 
He was missing that personal relationship that he needed. And so as soon as Jesus got out of the boat, this man runs to him immediately and falls on his face. He really wanted that relationship so bad that he'd get out of his own comfort zone. Today, if we're in our comfort zone, I'm going to sit here, I'm going to be quiet. I'm not even really going to listen. You're not going to hear a word from God. But if you get out of your comfort zone, if I'll get out of my comfort zone, God will speak to me directly through his word. He also allowed God to get in his personal business. All those things that I just rattled off, everyone in the area knew this about him. So here's a little known fact. People know a few things about me. It's okay. Jesus knew it before anybody else did. Jesus knows more than anybody thinks they know about me. The same goes for you, whether it's in public or in private. Let him into your personal business. But the man remained in submission. When we look at verse 6 there, and when he saw Jesus from afar, way off in the distance, he ran and fell down before him. When I know I got a problem, when you know you got problems, we need to run full sprint to Jesus to get help. Don't make excuses. We continue going through this passage and we see that um, this demon, um, he'll call himself Legion here in a little bit, um, he's going to start speaking for this man. He starts to bargain or beg um, Jesus in the wrong way. And anytime that we're allowing sin to speak for us, um, it only has self-ambition. It only cares about itself. If you've ever been in a situation where you had a habit that wasn't exactly healthy, and you told yourself you could quit, most of the time it didn't just happen. You needed help. Hopefully you went to Jesus. But if not, it's just going to come back. That self-ambition, that sin that drives itself, it's going to continue to do the same. There in verse 7, um, it says, I adjure you by God, do not torment me. Um, this is this demon speaking on this man's behalf. This man is allowing the wrong people to speak for him. Um, that word adjure, I told you I'm not that smart last week, and so I had to look it up. In this context, it's talking about um, him requesting in more of a commanding way. Have you ever told God, you better do this for me or else? Anyone ever been in a boat like that? This is exactly what this demon is trying to do. Like, hey, I'm going to tell you what's what. Um, but he realizes before that by calling Jesus the son of the most high God that Jesus had the authority in this. This demon had no business trying to command anybody to do anything. And so Jesus responds to him and says, what's your name? In other words, who are you to speak to me? Who are you to speak for this man? I've needed that to happen. I've needed Jesus to speak to my demons, to my problems in the same manner. For us to be there and say, you know what? You don't get to talk for me anymore. You don't get to control my life. If you've ever had any issues that you couldn't overcome on your own, that's what we do today. Ask Jesus to speak on your behalf. Stop letting our problems speak for us, no matter how long you've had them. Legion is what this demon's called. It represents 6,000 troops. So we can assume that allegedly this guy has 6,000 problems. How many problems do you think you got today? I got a lot of problems. I probably don't have 6,000, I would hope, right? My wife would probably tell me. Jesus didn't care how many problems this man had. And he told him, you're, you're not going to be allowed to be in this decision-making process. So that was strike one against this demon. In verse 10, he goes on to say, he begged him earnestly not to send him out of the country. Um, so these demons are still inside this man, and they don't want to leave the area. That shows the comfort level of sin in this man's life. They don't want to leave. If you, those hard ties to break, sin's real comfortable in some lives. But if we're Christ followers, if that's truly our passion, that's how we live our lives, we should not allow sin to get comfortable in our lives. We definitely shouldn't allow it to speak for us. He goes on in, in verse 12, um, and he begs, the, he begs him saying, um, send us to the pigs and let us enter them. Now it's self-preservation time. The demon's running out of options. He just wants to survive. Hey, send us into those pigs. Just, just let us go over there. And Jesus does not bargain with sin. He had it in his mind the entire time. 
We're going to drown these pigs as soon as he goes into them. He can drown your problems today too. He's drowned a lot of Kenan's problems because I gave him an opportunity because I got under submission to God. If we are here today and we don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, that is exactly what he wants to do for each one of us. No matter how big our problems, allow Jesus to have lordship, to be in charge, right? Not to just talk about it, but he gets a say, the first say in how we live our lives. That's that lordship. Your third blank there, um, it's in reference to verses 14 through 16. And it's the purpose of the pursuit is to get and to keep our minds right. In verse 14, these herdsmen, they're fleeing uh, to go tell all the people in the city and the country um, what just happened, right? And so they take off full sprint to tell everybody they know, hey, here's what happened. I'll give you a little preview. They don't tell the story in the right way. They end up telling the people in a way that would lead them to be more worried about the money that's coming in because of these pigs. They had a perfect opportunity to tell them how Jesus just did a miracle in front of them. But they didn't. Beware of those people that run to you with the wrong motives. So my grandfather said it this way. Um, I remember asking one time, we, we were sitting there talking, and uh, he said, Somebody said something bad about you. I was like, yeah. I thought I was a fighter, okay? I was real skinny. Um, he said, who said it? Gave him the name. He said, I'm, and I told him I'd go take care of it. He said, well, who told you? I told him the name. He said, well, my problem would be with the person that told me because the person that's got the problem was comfortable enough to say it to him. When someone says something bad about you, when someone wants to do you harm are some folks that are comfortable in your circle that have some sin going on that don't mean you any good speaking on your behalf being the in-between we need to X those out of our lives never doubt the character of Jesus these people also told the story in a way that made the character of Jesus come in doubt he only wants the good for us it may be uncomfortable We may not like it at first, but he only wants what is good for us. Another way to look at this is these people end up coming. They come see the show, if you will. Um, And they want to see Jesus, but they want to see this man that was all messed up, that had all these problems. Have you ever seen a movie? How many of us normally stay for the credits? I don't ever, right? As soon as it's over, hey, let's go. Let's beat everybody to the parking lot. Um, But when it comes to our our personal relationship with Jesus, that's the time when I need to know the person that made this movie, right? Who made me in the person of Jesus. I need to know how he constructed me, how I can learn more about him in every aspect of my life. Stay for the credits, right? Um, It's a really weird analogy, but it made sense to me. I hope it made sense to one of y'all. In verse 15, um, he said that, They came to see Jesus and saw this demon-possessed man um, who had had the legion sitting there clothed in his right mind. The only way that this man could be in his right mind is because he came in right relationship with Jesus. The only way that he could come to be in his right mind is because he had right relationship with Jesus. In John 14, in verse 6, it says this way, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So anyone that tells you that they're moralistic, that I'm a good person, that I do all these good deeds with no relationship with Jesus is wrong. And we can call that out. We can do that in a loving way. But I need that relationship for me to be in my right mind. First, it has to come with heart change. We know that. But the only way that actions come with that is for me to start thinking through it, for you to start thinking through it. The fact that this man was clothed um, is even further evidence of, of life change for him. Remember, like two passages earlier, he's naked, running from the mountains to the tombs, from the mountains to the tombs. He's got clothes on, sitting there thinking, did Jesus just do this for me? Why would he do this? These herdsmen, all these people that they went to speak to, they missed an opportunity with a relationship with Jesus because they were afraid. That's what it says at the end of that passage, that they were afraid. What were they afraid of? Change. A lot of times in our lives when we don't want 
that change because it's going to affect other relationships, because it's going to affect our lifestyle, because it's going to have us own some of that mess that we need to get out of our lives. Don't be afraid of change that we miss out on a relationship with Jesus. In verse 17, I looked at this as um, these people of this region, they go and beg Jesus to depart the region. Um, they think they're better off without Jesus. When we turn our TV on today, when we walk out of this building today, we'll pass some folks that think they're better off without Jesus. Don't let it be us. This big business of, of pigs in this region was, was really what they were focused on. Hey, he got rid of our money makers. He gave you the money maker in the first place. He can find you another one, right? I've been there. Or hey, he wouldn't make me that good at this job if he didn't want me to have it. Consult him about that job. It might not be what he's called you to do. Chris knows what I'm talking about. Whatever big business or excuse or situation that makes us believe that we're better off with Jesus is a lie. Simply put, it's a lie. But Jesus will never force a relationship that you don't want to have. He's never going to push himself into that relationship. But he's always going to be willing and able to help and come into your life anytime you want. But the bad thing about that is we don't know when our time's up. We don't know when our last breath's going to happen. If this COVID thing has taught us anything, folks that were here yesterday, they ain't here today. Folks that had plans for years out on their Thanksgiving plans for vacation, gone. Way different. Consult God. We go on to verse 18 here. Um, This man goes after Jesus. Once he gets in this boat, um, these people are like, hey, get out of here. We don't want you. Jesus, I'm not going to fight you guys. I'm not going to force this issue. And this man that was demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him. He wanted to follow Jesus. He wanted to be with him through this process. Um, It goes on to verse 19 um, that Jesus told him no. He didn't permit him to go. He told him to go home to his friends and to tell them how much the Lord had done for him and how he had had mercy on him. This man begged Jesus to go with him, to tag along with him, to learn from him, to be close to him. Sounds like discipleship, right? Sounds like that he was trying to make himself a disciple. And Jesus was like, I got something else in mind for you. Okay. Um, how about you go home? And so your fourth blank there, allegiance demands that we follow Jesus any and everywhere. Any and everywhere. A lot of times we come up with the idea, hey, here's where you want me. Here's where I want to be. Can you do this? And so the way that I normally put that, and folks that have been around me a long time, is we ask God to bless our mess. Right? I'm going to position myself right here because I'm comfortable, and I need you to bless everything that comes around me. Instead of, God, just tell me where to go, and I'll go. Tell me what to do, and I'll do it. Um, He tells him to go where he may be a little bit more uncomfortable. Think about it. This man's home, he left it to go live in tombs and mountains because of all of his problems. So these people think they know him. Um, Oftentimes, God will ask us to go into uncomfortable situations. Um, He goes even further and tells him to go to his friends, possibly even family members. Those folks that we really beef with, that we really got problems and we clash with, right? Friends, we don't have to go see them, but our family members, we see all the time, and and we normally have issues with, more issues than than we would others. But those are the people that will really see life change. Those people that we're around all the time. Those people that know us inside and out. When Jesus starts working in your life, it affects your marriage. It affects your parenting. It affects your social status. It affects the church. 
And then we go on and we want to mimic that mercy. He tells them, tell them all that the Lord has done for you. <clears throat> Wait, you mean tell them everything? Like all of it. Tell them all that the Lord has done for you. Those secrets. Everything. So I deal with a lot of students, especially youth. They think that their parents, their grandparents are perfect. They think that because we don't tell them the truth about things we've been through in life and how God has brought us out of it. Now, there's some things that they probably aren't ready for. But the other stuff, the real you before them, the you after them, and how we, it was a necessity that we had a personal relationship with Jesus, they need to know. Here's my charge to us today. And we're closing. Today, that we pursue Jesus. That we pursue him right now. That we pursue him in every aspect of our lives. With no excuses. That we would give him a real chance of life change for each one of us. If it's in our personal lives, just us. God, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to go wherever you tell me to go. If it's in our marriage, God, I'm going to lead this family in the way that you tell me to, regardless of what we've been doing for 10, 20, 30 years. As parents, hey, I thought I had it all figured out. I didn't. God, I'm going to do what you tell me to do. That's our charge today. I don't know where that found you today, but as I went through this, God just beat me up the whole time. But then he picked me back up. Here's why I have you here. Here's why I've had real change in your life. Here's why some of that had to be public. For folks to know that the God we serve is real. That this genuine, real relationship that we have with the creator of the universe, they can have as well. I think we're going to have a close with the song, but I just want us to stand if you would. I'm going to pray. Um, don't feel obligated, but if you want to come and pray up here, if you want to pray with your family where you're at, if you want to pray at home, I don't want us to just be hearers of God's word today. That we'd be doers. We'd put not just these verses, but other verses into action in our lives. Lord, we come to you today just thanking you for this time, Lord. I thank you for every individual that was able to be here and those that are at home, Lord. Lord, if I've said anything out of your will, Lord, convict me. Lord, every person that is out of your will right now, Lord, has an opportunity for life change. Because they know the truth. They can't use the excuse that, hey, I never heard. No one ever told me. God never tried to enter my life. But we don't know how much time we have. And so today we're just requesting that it's immediate. Lord, that you would convict hearts, touch lives. Give opportunity right here and right now. Lord, I personally know what allowing you to have lordship in life looks like and feels like. And it's so much more amazing on this side. And I know that somebody here is scared. Scared of change. I mean, I've tried this before. Somebody told me this before. Just give Jesus a chance. Give him the opportunity to lead you on a mission that you will never regret I have a lot of regrets in my life serving God is not one Lord touch families today that they would come together wholeheartedly to run after you Lord in every, spe every aspect of our lives 
Lord, touch one church family, our extended families, our friends, that they would see this body of believers from the youngest to the oldest living a life of purpose. And they would come running because you are glorified because we have told them all that you have done and how merciful you are. That we wouldn't mess this up in thinking that this harsh, mean God is coming to punish us. But we have an opportunity to receive mercy, Lord. We love you. We ask you all these things in Jesus' name.
This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. Amen. All right. Hey, Gene, you can turn lights back on, please. Oh, y'all can have a seat. Thank you all for being here today, um, being in prayer for our pastor, um, just that he is strong. Um, they've got some personal stuff going on we don't need to go in detail on, um, but y'all know that he loves y'all. Like, I need y'all to know that. Probably at 5 o'clock this morning, he's already up, not just praying for you, making things happen um, for you guys. Our elders, um, the same way. So I told you this message kind of moved me around a little bit. The leadership here is willing to do any and everything to be in the authority of God. To follow God's lead in everything. Every aspect of this church. That is a huge blessing for those that fall under that umbrella. Um, so I just wanted to, to share that with you today, to know that you're cared for probably more than you know, um, and more than probably some are other places. I'm not bashing other places, but I'm kind of fond of y'all, so we feel like we're going to stick around, all right? Um, but we've got D groups coming up. If it's your first time being here, I'm sure somebody will find you and say, hey, come be part of my D group, all right? Uh, kids will walk you a across the your various D groups, and then we just got a few announcements. Sock hop. All right, so we are still getting socks for Ida Burns Elementary. Um, last week we found out that they're, they weren't going to be in school for at least three weeks, but we'll still have some ways to get them. Um, 420 pair of socks is what we're trying to do, um, and we're trying to do that before uh, the 6th of December. We have 128 pair my last count, I counted thir uh, Thursday, and so that's what we have. So keep them coming. Um, same deal. It's something that you can even ask extended family. They're going to ask kids or, or you, hey, what do you need during the holidays? That's a, that's a way we can do lo local missions um, and help out. Cool the other, socks. Cool socks. Yes, cool socks. So you need me to show you. Ain't no, ain't no plain. Oh, what's happening? Gene. Here. Where are you at? Look at him. What is what? Boom. What does this say? No problem. Ah. <laughs> yep, that's it. All right, I'm going to keep that off, though, for a while because that's going to take even longer. All right. Um, Thanksgiving Day Serve is coming up as well. Uh, we have a link on the website, and I believe Facebook is the easiest to get to it um, if you want to try to serve in any capacity on there. It's not an all-day event for everybody. There's some time slots, certain things that you can do um, for each one of those. And our Christmas Hope Box. We have 13 families that our D groups have volunteered to help out with. And then we have ingredients that we will deliver to them. That way they can fix um, their own meals and do that as a family um, beforehand. And I believe the 19th and the 20th of next month is going to be our delivery date. So if you want to help out with that, if you're not part of a D group, um, just ask one of the D group leaders. Ask me, Paul, one of the elders. We'll get you the info. I think that's it. All right, so this is our next um, event. Paul will talk more about this um, whenever we come back. But our next series, he's going to preach on the wander. Oh, and then he went to the other. All right. <laughs> the wander of, of Christmas, okay? And so, all right, now you can go. All right, and then our Christmas Eve candlelight service. I'm personally looking forward to this. Um, this will be my first one here. Um, and I hear it's uh, the bee's knees, as the young people say, all right? So it's supposed to be pretty cool. The bee's knees? <laughs> yes. That's yeah, I heard say. that in a while. You're saying that? <laughs> Somebody's right. saying it. All Just right. Just checking. <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for coming out today. Um, continue to uh, pray for One Church family, um, the, all those that are in need uh, over the holiday season, over Christmas um, as it comes up. And everyone be safe for this Thanksgiving. See you next week. Bye-bye.